What are we looking at today? Well, we're going to look at the CJRB Caldera. You mean like this? No, not that Caldera. These knives. So let's go ahead and look out for the logo and we'll do some artistic spinny intro. This is the CJRB Caldera. Now, as you can see, I have two versions of them. One of them came from Jared and the other one came from CGRB for on the channel to be given away to my paying members at my leisure. So let's go ahead and take a look at both functional and beautiful knives here. So like I said, before we did the little spinning intro, this, uh, this is a very good knife. I'm really happy with this, uh, both the production and prototype version. This is the one that I used the most. This came from Jared. Uh, this one I was trying to keep pristine because it's going to be a giveaway. Like I say, a lot of times people think I get a lot of stuff free from companies. I don't. Typically what comes in is stuff that comes from Jared over at Neves Knives. CJRB and Artisan though is an exception. I'm one of their designers and they have uh, set forth and decided that they want to get some of their stuff out. And so I do get stuff, but it never, it very rarely stays. A lot of times it's giveaways. So this is a great, great looking cleaver. It is comfortable, easy to use. We're going to put a spec sheet up over here and we're going to talk about it. Um, I'm not going to bring up any specs. I don't think we're going to do any behind the edge thickness and stuff like that because I'll just tell you, it cuts really well. It's nice and thin. I think the product, the prototype version is a little bit thinner. So uh, behind the edge, I should say. So let's go ahead and get this one out and take a look at the one I used the most. Like I said, this is the one that Jared sent me, and this is the one I used the most. The the finish has held up incredibly well. ARPM ha ARPM nine has a tendency to uh, do really well with a stone wash. So you get a nice stone wash finish. G ten scales pocket clip on this is a deep carry pocket clip, but it's done in a fashion that is very comfortable. The knife overall super comfortable. The jimping definitely could be less soft. If you look right here, you can see. It's very soft. It's almost just there as a, as a as a look. Very rarely do I find jimping attractive. I like it when it's more functional uh, as opposed to just there for an aesthetic touch. The handles have got a lot of micro milling and stuff done, or not, not micro milling, but some milling done on them that gives you kind of almost a starburst pattern. But in hand, it feels a little grippy, so it is kind of tactile. You got a good flipping action, really good flipping action, reverse flick, with that big aperture. And then you have this really broad, wide ARPM9 blade that is good, good, good for cutting. It's really good. Um, I don't think that I would want to change anything on this knife. I'm not saying it's perfect in any way, shape, or form. You know, it, it does not have some of the ergos that I would want. Uh, it feels a little, cur a little bit too curved in here. But overall, for use and comfort, it does cut really well. You can get a good grip on it. Let's get a couple things out, do some size comparison. Uh, but we're going to use the fancier one because I want to talk about the variations. So this is the one we're going to do size comparison with so you guys can see how attractive it is. And then I will talk about this one in particular a little bit. The Cansep Prickle, which is a new addition to my uh, collection. I, I like the one that Jared sent me so much I bought it. So you can see uh, Cansep Prickle, almost the same length, but much, much smaller. This is a very big knife uh, in dimensions uh, like blade width uh, and, and things like that. So Cansep Prickle, not even close to the size. And this is, this is a fairly thin knife, just to give you a little comparison. So the next knife we're going to look at is the PMP Big Boy, which is another relatively large knife, as you can see. Um, just a little bit longer than the, uh, the Caldera, but it, the Caldera has this sweeping down, almost, uh, I'd say modified Warncliffe or sheep's foot, really useful, nice blade, um, in this cleaver here. So there's your second one. And then as always, the final one's going to be the Chris Reeve Sabenza, which is just about as far as like handle width and blade length, about one for one. So if you know the size of a, uh, Chris Reeves large Sabenza 21, you're going to know the size of this. So let's go ahead and get these out of the way. And we're going to talk about these knives side by side because they are the same knife and they're really good. I'm talking about the production versus prototypes. So let's get this out of the way. Guys, I hate to interrupt the video because I know we're having fun, but I do have to do the YouTuber thing and remind you that this channel is spelled self-sponsored with all the affiliate links and stuff you see down below. Anything from knives, tools, EDC gear, and uh, Blade HQ, anything, all the Amazon links, they all support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything at checkout. So 
I'll talk about that at the end of the video. Now let's go back to the knives. And look at them side by side because CJRB has got a tendency to do several different versions. I find this very, very attractive. Um, this is not bad as well. I love the fact that CJRB offers you some very budget friendly options, but has this flash and pop to it. I like the red pivot collars with a stone wash and it's like a, uh, almost like a satin pivot. But I do have to say, I find this much more attractive. In hand, they feel absolutely the same. Jimping is the same. Everything about it's the same. Maybe a little difference in edge thickness on the production version versus the prototypes. But you have to remember, prototypes at CGRB and Artisan are handmade. And then there's just a testing process. So they're all handmade, hand ground, everything. So you're going to see some variations and differences in this. So it might be a little bit thinner behind the edge, but ever so slightly. It cuts really well. Now I didn't do any real cutting with this. I did some minor things, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to screw up the finish on it because, like I said, this is going to be a giveaway on the channel. But you can look at that and just that red and black. Not much difference in materials. You're not adding a lot. You're not adding additional cost. You're using the same materials. Maybe just a little bit in machining, but the end result with that black and red and then this milled area catching some of the iridescence on the G10, almost like you'd see somewhat similar to carbon fiber, which is why it's so popular is because of attractiveness. If done right, G10 can be a very attractive, attractive uh, material. And the fact that they did this really well, I'm pretty sure that they probably mocked these up, glued these parts together and then ground and cut them because it is so, so tight in there. There's really no gap in these parts here that you can really, you can see it a little bit, but you really can't feel it, feel it because they were milled together. Done really well. If you're somebody that likes a lanyard, you have a lanyard hole, you have an anodized aluminum backspacer that's anodized red. Uh, anytime you anodize aluminum with this red hard coat, it is gorgeous. Um, it is one of those colors that I really like, and you can only get it in like these aluminum hard coat anodizings that are done and it gets this really crystalline look to it it looks beautiful it pops really well on this black background so sorry about that guys anytime i move i kick that um so yeah this thing in either one of the finishes is great i'm definitely going to be dropping a link to it uh, in the description below. So I did use this for a lot of cutting. I cut down a lot of cardboard. I cut down a lot of uh, paper and things like that, you know, packaging, open and packages. I used it in the kitchen for some minor kitchen tasks. I did carne asada here not too long ago and I cut the strips with it and it does perform really well at those because it is nice and thin and the transition is good on both of them. Like I said, even though this one feels ever so slightly thicker behind the edge, it did really well. And one of the best ways that you can see what your edge geometry and blade geometry is doing is cutting apples. And so since I was cutting up some apples for dessert for me to have, because I have to eat a lot of fiber with my intestinal issues, I had cut up some apples and I was like, why don't I cut it up with the knife that I'm testing so I can see how the edge performs. When you're cutting apples, if it cuts through nice and smooth and you don't see any issues, you've got good edge and blade geometry. When you cut apples and you can see it start to peel up and crack, that means that your transition from your edge to your spine, from your, your primary grind is a little steep for things. And that's gonna indicate how well it's gonna slice. As you can see, this transitions really, really well. It performed very good. Onions, uh, not so good with carrots. Uh, carrots are just not a real good metric without a kitchen knife. But onions and apples, both really well on it. And potatoes. Uh, I cut some potatoes with it. So if you're looking for a really good all-around knife, you can't go too... You, you just can't go too wrong with this. Like I said, you're getting a lot of blade, really comfortable. It's a very attractive knife all around, any one of the, the formats that you go with. Um, there is nothing... As far as a, a downside with the lanyard hole, I was going to mention this. Even though I'm not a fan of lanyard holes, and they did do one anyway, it's enclosed inside the backspace. And that inside the backspacer, I should say. And that's kind of important because there are a lot of guys that really get into having beads on their stuff. And I've mentioned it before. You can get some really expensive beads like this one, like this this uh, this octopus one that I've got, or some of these hand, you know, these these milled titanium ones like this. I have a lot of beads. I don't use them. They're just things that I collect. But some of these can get really pricey. And if you tie that on a lanyard, 
and then your knife closes down on it and it gets in the path of the blade and it cuts that lanyard, then you could be out. Some of those beads can cost $100. So it's kind of a good thought. It's a, it's a really better thought out than some others that they've put it through the backspacer all the way. And then you have these liners um, on this one. They're kind of stonewashed to match the blade. It's striking. It is attractive. It gives you that pop of color. That's like if they're if you're not going to either fully enclose them or if you're going to do them like this. I like when they match and make them look the same as the blade. Same on this one. So those black liners and the black scale material coming down, and then you've got the black and red color contrast. Black pocket clip on a red background. Red back or red pivot collar on a black background. It looks really good. Um, so not only is it very attractive, it's a really good all around knife. So if you're looking for one, I've got a purchase link that I'll put in the, in the description below. So yeah, these are a lot of fun. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and turn this around, do some final thoughts. So there you go, everybody, the CJRB Caldera. Yes, it's an image of a Caldera behind me. Uh, <laughs> It's a lot of fun. It's a great little knife. I'm pretty impressed with it. I like a lot of the cleavers and I don't understand why I was so opposed to them at first. When I first started seeing people making cleavers, I'm like, I don't like that. And then I got a couple of them and I really like the cleaver style design. You get a big broad blade and stuff like that. It doesn't take up that much more pocket space because a lot of times the handles are pretty thin. Forgot to mention that at the tabletop. Guys, that's it. If you like this one, uh, there's a purchase link down below. And if you're one of my paying members, stand by. This is going to be a giveaway before too long as a paying member, uh, which leads me to the next thing. If you guys want to support the channel, it's as simple as like, share, subscribe, drop a comment, hit the bell icon. If you do hit the bell icon, make sure you get notifications turned on your device or you will not get notified of all of the content that goes up. If you want to support the channel financially, there's a handful of ways. I'm pretty sure I mentioned it in the video in the mid roll that this channel is self-sponsored. And I have a ton of affiliate links in the description below including purchase links for knives, Blade HQ, a VPN, Coffee Brand Coffee, all kinds of stuff down below where it supports the channel. Anything you purchase does not cost you anything at checkout. Other ways you can do it, I have a membership down below. I mentioned that a minute ago. Paying members, all members get access to my Gilded server and save $5 off my sharpening assist, uh, service. The premium and baseline tier members get automatically entered in the giveaways that I do on the Gilded server, and the premium tier members have access to a sharpening tutorial series here on YouTube. And the final way is I have a merchandise store. Not this merchandise. This is old school stuff, but I do have a merchandise store on Ember Shirt Co. And I can save you 10% at checkout anywhere on Ember Shirt Co. with the coupon code Crazy Sharp. All one word, capital C, capital S, Crazy Sharp. Saves you 10% at checkout. Guys, that's it. I love you all. Keep it clean in the comment section. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. And I will see you in the next video.